just an interesting discrepancy since my leg and my back were really sore the next day. I don't like to sometimes tell you guys things that are a little bit negative. So today we are going to talk about 10 things. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 things that I noticed in the USA that are weird. Different from what we do in Europe. What's weird is wonderful. What's wonderful is weird, but beware anything strange or odd. If you're brand new here, I returned to the United States of America for the first time since before the apocalypse. Bit dramatic, COVID. Before all the lockdowns and everything, the last time I was there, I believe was January, 2020. And I had not returned since recently, till recently, words. I got an A on my vocabulary test. <gasps> So some of the things on this list are going to be directly related to things that happened during the pandemic, knock on ramifications. And other things are just things I might not have noticed before when I visited the United States. Remember not to take this list too seriously. These are just the observations of some random girl on the internet from Ireland who is currently sweating her face off in a heat wave in Spain. This video is brought to you by Patreon and channel members as with 99% of the videos on this channel. If you wanna see more of me and choose to for doing things, you can find more videos over there for the cost of a coffee, maybe even less depending on what coffee you drink. Okay, the first things, contactless payment. Last time I was in the USA, I was making a list similar to this and I pointed out that you guys are not super on board yet at that time with contactless payment. But this time when I went, ever did pay with your phone, like Apple Pay? Except for Walmart, which is a story I'll tell you another day. It was a bit awkward at the tail. I have no money. But yeah, it makes sense you guys got on board with contactless payment because we all didn't want to touch each other for a while there, right? I really like this because I always got weirded out when you would take my card away in restaurants. That is something that does not happen in Europe. The next thing I noticed is that walking hurts more. So this time when I went, I was not there with a driver. So I planned on either walking or Ubering everywhere. And I'm pretty chill to walk anywhere within a 30 minute radius. However, on this trip, I noticed that after walking that fairly short distance, my leg and my back were really sore the next day. And I've heard you guys tell me below in comments that it's something to do with how the roads are made. Like they're made of concrete slash tarmac in one place. Basically European footpaths slash sidewalks. Sidewalks. I'm sorry, I don't speak American. Are bouncier than they are in America. Or so it felt to my sore back. So it kind of occurred to me that it makes sense that a lot of you guys don't like to walk anywhere, especially if you hurt the next day. The next thing I noticed, and we'll come back to this in a later video, was that a three-star hotel is not as good as a three-star hotel in Europe. So I had a bad experience with the first hotel I checked into, and this was surprising because it was a three-star hotel. And when I said this to a couple of you guys, you were like, well, yeah, it's a three-star hotel. In Europe, generally, you would think of a three-star hotel as like fairly good, but apparently three stars gets you less bang for your buck in the United States. So that was just an interesting discrepancy. Next up, ooh, I don't like to sometimes tell you guys things that are a little bit negative, but this one is. All she ever does is hate on America. It's that you have a lot more people working at a much older age there. I don't know why I never noticed this before, but this time when I was there, I did notice like people working into their 80s. And I'm not talking about like working in offices because like who actually retires these days? I think most people like to continue working to some degree, you know, like people like to keep their brains active and they like to do a little stuff at the desk. But I noticed people working like pushing carts in laborious jobs or working in supermarkets and stacking shelves at an older age. And that's just not something you see so much in Europe. You can explain to me a little bit, maybe the reasons in comments. And it kind of made me sad, so I'm gonna move on. The next thing, and I love this about America, it's personal space. So in the United States, you have always been very, very, very good at personal space. Some countries in Europe are not so much, like the Scandi countries, like they will stand on top of you. You will be having a conversation with a German person and they will be here. In Ireland and the UK, not so much. We do also kind of like our personal space, but Americans are just really, really good at giving you 
that little bit of distance. But this time when I went, I noticed that even more so in crowded areas, people were still giving you a little bit of distance. This also lends to the fact that in America, you guys are really good at queuing or lines, you call them lines. You're good at like standing one behind the other. Europeans are not good at queuing. It is so stressful when you're in a queue with European people, side queuing. Mm. We could make her really angry. But I will also say in America, you do a lot of queuing, so you got good at it. But hardly ever when I'm in America does anyone like make contact with my body, uh, except for the plane incident. Check that video if you haven't. The next thing I noticed, and this one's not exclusive to the United States, but it's definitely something that has changed in the last three years. People be taking selfies everywhere. If you go into a restaurant, people are taking photos of their food. Like every table is doing it. Not every table, that's an exaggeration. I always like going to America because people are way more chill with you filming. Like they're like, okay, she's obviously creating content or something and they're just more understanding. Whereas in Europe, you have to do a lot more justifying and explaining. I guess because there are a lot more content creators per capita in the United States. I don't know that to be a fact, but it feels true. Let's just throw a statistic out there. 30%. But I actually find it quite nice that people are documenting their lives a lot more there. Like you see families taking photos a lot more. You see people taking selfies in cool places. And I just think that's quite a nice thing. People are making memories and keeping them. But also don't forget to live your life, you know? Don't just be holding the phone up all the time. The next big thing I noticed was just how much customization there is. I've always said that when I go to the United States that a lot of times when you guys are ordering foods, you'll really personalize what you want. Like I want it with ranch, but without onions and with pickles, but without carrots. And I think that's cool, especially with the tipping culture that you guys get what you want. But even more so, there was more options to customize things when ordering foods. The list had gotten way longer about how you could customize things. And also when you were buying things, there were more options for customization. Like for example, when I was in Walmart, I saw cheese and tomato pizza from, I think it was like some generic brand, like Goodfellas or something. And you could get cheese and tomato pizza with spicy tomato or plain tomato. You could get it with extra cheese or less cheese. It didn't say less cheese, it just was standard. Also when I went to VidCon, I saw like a lot of times you could pretty much customize anything, hoodies, cups, you could buy customized phones just right off the shelves. Like you had to customize them and then buy them, but in person, in the place. Whereas in Europe, a lot of times when I'm buying anything that I want custom, I have to order it on the internet. The next thing I noticed, and I don't know how I haven't noticed this before, because when I tuned into it, I was like, oh, that is a thing. Your toilets flush way louder than they do in Europe. And I'm going to say as a non-scientist person, I think I figured it out, is it to do with the water pressure? and like the water level, they're so loud. I felt like I was announcing, I'm done, I'm done, to everybody when I was done. The next one definitely related to the pandemic, your hand drying options. In most toilets, you had the option of not just blow drying, but also there were hand towels like everywhere. Whereas a lot of times in Europe, you just get to blow dry or use a towel. Some places have, of course, hand towels, the paper towels, but in the United States, this time when I went, you had both everywhere. And finally, the number one big change I noticed was you can get delivery everything. Everything, DoorDash is freaking huge. You can get every single restaurant to deliver to you from whatever company. You can even get stuff couriered by Uber, I believe. There were options to get my laundry cleaned by a company and I actually found that one a bit dodgy. So I did actually make a cool trip to a laundry place. That'll be a future video. But like you can actually get anything to your door and I love that, I love that. Anytime, day or night, you can get pretty much anything delivered to your door without ever having to leave. And so we beckon in a new world where we all just live in our houses and don't actually see people in real life. But you know what, I'm kind of chill with that as an introvert, but also I can see downsides. What's the weirdest thing you've ever had delivered to you? Let me know below in comments. Shout out to a couple of very special people. 
Our first shout out comes from the always lovely Kim Sparks, who wants to shout out all the educators. She says summer break is almost over and they have to get ready to try and prepare a whole new group of students for their life adventures. She says it's such a noble profession. It really is. Thank you so much, Kim. Our second shout out comes from the always joyful Ricky and he says his shout out goes to me, Chewy, YouTube members and Patreon members who make it possible for me and Chewy to make videos for all to enjoy. Thank you so much, Ricky. I'm sure some people don't enjoy them, but hey, watching counts. Thank you so much, guys. That's it for today. See you on the inside. Bye.